Well, hello then. I just, my brain just stopped working there. Let's try that again. So last night I was scrolling through my YouTube comment section and I think I found it, guys. I think I found the most atrocious comment all within three sentences that I have ever received on YouTube. I've been doing this for like five or six years now. This is a momentous day. We should celebrate by going through it. Before I unveil this gem, I want to address people who are going to say that I shouldn't be responding to haters, right? That like giving ignorance or trolls attention is not a beneficial thing. And I've always been very torn on that, but I do think that using sometimes not great comments as an example to illustrate bigger points is important. And oh boy, this comment, it, it's not crude or vile or hateful. It is a very clear representation of deep ignorance. Join me. Let's read. Also, the puppies are not in the video today because they refuse to stop playing with each other. And so they are very sad relegated to the kitchen looking at me right now. First sentence, fantastic. Ma'am, you make me feel so much better about myself. I'm really glad I could help, right? That's great. Sentence two, I have always hated the way I look, but when I saw you, you little freak, I realized how fortunate I am. And the piece de resistance, I don't think I'm using that correctly. The final part that I really want to talk about is you are really brave to continue living. I'd rather shoot myself than live as an incomplete person. Let's digest. Reading this comment, this is all phrased as a compliment, as almost like giving thanks to me that this person now feels better about themselves in some way. And isn't that nice? <laughs> I'm so glad I could help. I don't think that there is a better way to encapsulate how disabled people are objectified than this comment. I've talked about this a lot before. I have such a, a complicated relationship with the word inspirational. It's something that I am told on a daily basis. People will approach me in public or leave comments online talking about how I'm so inspiring to them. You're such an inspiration, Joe. And I always say thank you because of course, like genuinely thank you. That is a lovely thing to say to someone. But sometimes the darker underbelly of it is thank you for existing as a broken disabled person so that I can feel better about the problems that I have. Thank you for being gross to society and somehow still existing, good for you, so that I can have two minutes of being like, wow, if her life's so fucked up and she can still go to the grocery store, maybe my problems really aren't that bad. Okay, so the obvious, that last line, you know, I'd rather shoot myself than live as an incomplete person. I don't think I need to say this to most people, but I'm not an incomplete person. I am indeed missing a leg. Your powers of detection are powerful. I don't think that this is that subversive of an idea. I don't believe that a leg or lack thereof is what gives me personhood or value on the planet. And I'm very glad I don't believe those things because I think those ideas are absolute bullshit. And the really heartbreaking reality is that people who lose their limbs like end up taking their own lives in part because of this kind of viewpoint that you are irreparably broken and different and bad and incomplete and it's not something you can ever fix because your leg ain't growing back one thing that i have noticed since losing my leg and something that i have tried to push back against is the notion that this is something that is so drastically different than the experience of an average person on the planet. Now, if you stopped me there and were like, Joe, isn't like 90% of your content about how your life is different as an amputee? Yes. But when I'm talking about the loss, like the grief of going through something like this, for a lot of people, the trauma of it, it is not that different when you're talking about impact on a human what actually makes us human losing a sibling going through a severe trauma the list goes on there are horrific things that we often go through as people that fundamentally change us that we feel like pieces of us have been cut off that we will never be the same that there was a before and an after to this one moment and that piece is very common to our human experiences so no i am not an incomplete person because a part of my body is gone. This kind of mindset is what contributes to people with disabilities ending their lives or carrying around the shame for the entirety of their existence that they are not as good as or worthy as or deserve to be alive. There's a chunk of society that doesn't think disabled people should be around. And maybe they're not talking about exterminating us. I think it is through comments like this and this kind of mindset that like, yeah, it makes sense if you off yourself, if your body is different, because who wouldn't? This is so horrific and awful 
awful and disgusting and gross that, oh my God, you would off yourself in a heartbeat. And it's always presented as this compliment. You know, I am applauding you for continuing to live in the face of this adversity. But if we think about what is being said a little bit deeper, there's a dark message there. I watched this stupid video earlier this week where this girl was talking about special needs people being at the mall. Why is that allowed? Because it makes her sad. It makes her sad. Come on guys, don't cancel me. You know it makes you sad too to see those pathetic disabled people. But it's not new news to any of us. I make people uncomfortable. We make people uncomfortable simply by our existence. And if you are someone who has found yourself in that boat, as I have before in my life, it's worth examining. Like, why does this make me uncomfortable? What is it about that that scares me or that I'm afraid of? We abolished ugly laws, which basically meant disabled people weren't allowed in public because it's sad and the normies shouldn't have to see sad. Ugh. Additionally, going back to that second comment, I've always hated the way that I look, but when I saw you, I realized how fortunate I am. It really speaks to this like tokenism and objectification of disability. There are basically two kinds of disabled people that you are allowed to be. One is the sad, pathetic, disabled person who never leaves their house and deserves nothing but pity. And the other is the continually inspirational disabled person who is always positive and overcomes adversity. And there's really nothing in between. We're a little uncomfortable with like the middle ground of two things can be true at the same time. You can live your life and struggle. You can overcome things and grieve what you've lost. When I've made videos talking about the sadness or the grief or the loss, I'll get pushback from people who have previously left comments being like, oh my god, you're so inspiring on a video when I'm like running. And then that same person will comment on a video where I'm talking about like, this is a hard time or my prosthetic broke or I have to have more surgery or like, this is just really freaking hard to live in a society that is not built for disabled people. But when I say that out loud, I am suddenly transformed from the palatable, nice, inspirational disabled person into the kind that we don't like. And, and I'll get pushback. You should be more positive or like be thankful for what you do have from the same people who just called me inspirational because I am no longer the little piece of candy that they can take for two seconds to feel better about their own lives. And that is the reason why I sometimes have difficulty with being called inspirational because sometimes that is canceled out the second that I show a shred of humanity of difficulty dealing with something because it challenges someone's view and I have now ruined their image of this like childlike inspiring creature for them. So hey, I made this person feel better about how much they hate their body. Maybe now they love their bodies. Heck, I hope that they do genuinely, but like at my expense. How is it my video that like changed everything for you? Have you not seen other disabled people existing in society ever? Ugh, guys, I, I had surgery a week ago. That's where this like new neck scar has come from. I think they also removed some some of the chill that I had and I'm feeling very sassy this week. Long story short, don't, don't be this person. Don't leave comments like this. Don't tell someone that you now can accept yourself because they are so gross to you and yet they're still existing. So maybe you should love yourself too. Don't call people incomplete because they're disabled. Thank you so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. To my amazing patrons over on Patreon, I truly appreciate your generosity. Thank you for making these videos possible. If you're watching this video right now, you could have been anywhere else in the world doing anything else, yet you chose to hang out with me here for a few minutes, and I truly appreciate that. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.